Do you own a cheap and cheerful Chinese action camera? If you do, I've got a gift for you. So stick with me and let's jump into it. Welcome to this episode of Design Talk by DIY3DTech.com. For those who've watched the channel for a while, you might remember I produce for several different YouTube channels, and to do that, I need a number of cameras. So about this time last year, I picked up about a dozen of these. They're 4K cheap and cheerful Chinese action cameras. Uh, they work good for the money and allow me to get a lot of good footage. However, this year as I'm building out the new shops and studio, I needed something with an external audio input. So it was off to the interweb I went looking for, again, something cheap and cheerful because I need to buy a number of them. And I found this guy. What is this guy? Well, I'll share it with you. So here it is. I'm not going to try to mess with the name. You can figure it out. I'll have a link down below. I picked up several of these off of Amazon. And the cool thing about it is it has an external mic input, which is very handy because what I want to do in the studio is run uh, the audio in from a mixer from several different mics. And this will give me the ability to do it and shoot 4K video for less than 50 bucks. So that is definitely cheap and cheerful and the video quality out of these are pretty darn good. So with that being said, the one challenge I did face is how do I mount this into my existing studio rigs? Now I turned to the interweb and I looked for a cage and for those that might not be aware of it, a cage allows you to connect it this to a number of different photographic or videographic uh, accessories. And there were cages out there for the DJI Osmo, for GoPros, even for the E4K, but you know the lowly cheap and cheerful you know, Chinese knockoffs, there wasn't. So I decided to turn to Fusion 360 and design my own. So I want to share a little bit of the design concepts with you guys in this video. So in case your face was similar, you can again kind of think through it as I did and come up with a design that works maybe like this. So what I did with first and foremost was I needed an attachment mechanism. And that attachment mechanism is actually the center body. And so I started with the center core cage. Now, all cages are made up of a bunch of quarter 20 threaded um, openings because the standard in the photographic world is, is a quarter 20 and you can attach all kinds of stuff to this. And they're typically set on nine millimeters on center. So this is what you have across the top. You have a bunch of quarter 20s, quarter 20s on the side, quarter 20s on the bottom, quarter 20s on the other side. So you, you, know, you can attach an unlimited number of objects to this because one of the pieces I want to do is, is I'm also going to develop a boom on here for a mic to attach to this maybe even a couple mics and then possibly an LED light. Now to hold this all inside this cage, the center cage, what I decided to do was use two pieces a front and back to kind of sandwich this in. In the back I decided to add a little bit more utilitarian pose to it and I put a sun shield on here. Now I printed this in white PLA as you can see, some of the light comes through. It would be better in black. In the studio, it's okay. In direct sunlight, I definitely suggest the black. On the front, I designed a piece that just simply overlaps the camera by about a millimeter on each side and again sandwiches it in. Now, I hold the whole thing together with a bunch of M4s, about five millimeters long, tapped in. Now, I did originally design this with M3s, threaded M3s. However, I couldn't get the resolution of the printer at that size to form the threads and holes where, where they'd really work. So I just simply gave up on that and I went with self-tapping uh, M4. Now I'll have a link to the M4 bolts down below. I buy a hundred pack off of eBay for like three bucks. They're super handy. It's a good size to work with uh, because actually what I do is I prefer the cap heads to the screw heads gives it a better look, um, more industrial look to the whole thing. Now in this version what I decided to do was to add a little bit extra protection to it and I built this kind of bump out around the lens as you can kind of see here instead of having this open this is now closed in the lens pokes through and I have this bumper guard around it so it stands proud of the lens but not enough to where it would vignettes the lens so it works out really well also if you were to drop this and I don't guarantee it but I, obviously it provides one heck of an outer box like bumper guard to the camera so uh, really utilitarian from that standpoint of resiliency also I've uh, got openings in here that even my fat fingers can get into uh, for the buttons on the side, the top, 
you know, again, all the ports here. Now, the one thing I did not leave open was the battery compartment on the bottom. And the reason I did that is I really need these. Of all the quarter 20s, I need these and the ones on the top to attach my peripherals. So I'm powering this for the most part off the uh, micro USB here. And so, you know, no, had been no problems for me. And if you do need to uh, change the battery, you would have to pop the screws out. Now, also, I designed in an opening here for the mic that plugs in here. It's a, it's a 90 degree angle mic, comes out, cord comes down here. Now, you might notice a little bit of delamination uh, here and on the top. And this is because this particular version I printed uh, with the M3s. And when I threaded these in, some of the layerings cracked because the holes are actually through holes. I may come up with a version in the future uh, where I split the case and print it as two halves because the pieces with the, with the supports because of the holes and this opening, because the holes will actually print without supports, but these larger openings will not. And so uh, it needs a lot of supports. And this takes a really long time to print. This is like a five hour print out of PETG. And, and again, part of it is the speed going slower with PETG. I really like PETG for the main body because it is so resilient. I print the front and the back out of PLA because it's, it's, it's more rigid and you know it doesn't really take the abuse that this is going to take. Because if you're gonna drop it, the real impact is gonna be on the corner or the bottom or something like that. Um, you could do the whole thing again out of PLA. Uh, I think it'd work just fine. Uh, but I think the resiliency of PETG I really like. So with that being said, I thought this was an interesting design. I'm actually going to come up with more accessories for this design. I'm also going to design a 15 millimeter rail set up for this uh, to hook different accessories to it. And I'm probably going to expand this uh, piece once I understand a little bit better where the vignetting comes in. And uh, so I can, uh, you know, add filters and, and pieces and additional lenses to this camera. So hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, hey, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Swag Shop's going to be up in the corner. And the link for this will be down below out on Thingiverse. And we'll catch you guys in the next video where we design something else cool. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on